If you really think about inspiration to do anything, it needs to come from someplace a little bit higher than we live our normal everyday life. And it also has to have some meaning, something that inspires people to believe in it. I guess long ago, when I was first getting started, I didn't certainly have any idea or presumption to be a teacher, or even to imagine that teaching was something that would be down the road for me. What I think inspired me to teach was that it helped me. And uh, like it is for anyone who is going through a period of time of distress or uh, injury, there is a sense that in healing, in yoga, there is healing. The healing that comes through yoga is not purely a healing in the physical sense, but it's a healing that arises from within us, both psychologically, spiritually, um, and beyond. In many ways, uh, it's a simply purely physical healing that occurs as well. So I think that for me, uh, like anyone else beginning to do this kind of teaching, there is a long period of time of thinking and, and uh, practicing. And it's that practice that gradually inspires a, a person to teach and to teach with some seriousness about it. If someone comes uh, with a cut finger or a neck strain or shoulder strain, there is a period of time in, in which uh, there needs to be the creation of space for healing. That sense of the creation of space, of a, a whole and complete warm space in which someone can actually live and have their being for a time, that creation of space is an important part of what a teacher does. And uh, I like to do that. I like to create space by the relaxation methods we teach, the breathing techniques that we offer, and especially through the meditation process that is really a hallmark of what we do here at the Himalayan Institute. The process of creating space uh, is not something which directly or uh, permanently uh, changes the way a person is until through practice they have begin to own, begun to own it themselves. And uh, that owning of meditation or of relaxation for oneself is an important step in the process of teaching. So I've found that for me at least, it's not only important to teach, but to teach again and again and again and again, until finally that uh, home for one's spirit uh, begins to show up. That uh, the practice that we do begins to occur again at home or in, in the living room of one's own uh, house. The process of finding that living space and then creating a quietness inside it is really what yoga seems to be about, at least a good deal of what it's about. And uh, we have a great deal of, of uh, technique to teach that is also part of the process. The technique that we teach is something that comes from uh, a long tradition of practice. And uh, to be a part of that practice in any way is really quite an honor and uh, something that I look forward to when I do teach. But finally, uh, there is a transcendent something. That transcendent something is uh, something that we come back to day after day, time after time. Patanjali, the great sage of yoga, uh, the person who really uh, de developed the practice of yoga in a systematic way, uh, he made it very clear that there are two things which lead to enlightenment, practice and non-attachment. Those two things, practice and non-attachment, are quite different and separate from one another at first. They seem to be meditation techniques and practice on one hand, and on the other hand, this idea of non-attachment, which is a little hard to, to puzzle out. Non-attachment has something to do with the restoration of balance in life. We begin without uh, knowing it, but being out of balance, and we continue only to find our own balance and restore that balance in a more permanent way. Gradually, that brings a feeling of restored balance 
and uh, that res restoration of balance is something that can be passed on. So the great teaching of yoga, the teaching of non-attachment, and the leading of a person back toward the self inside them which is nurturing and health healthy and helpful, uh, that's what does it for me at least. And uh, I'm most intrigued with seeing how this process continues to develop every time we do it. So if you're thinking about a teacher training program for the 500-hour process, uh, think about us. We'd love to have you here and enjoy meeting you. Thank you.